Now that we've learned how to calculate the value of the equilibrium constant, we can use equilibrium constants in a few different ways. One way is to help us predict which direction a reaction will go in order to reach equilibrium. In other words, will it go from right to left, from products to reactants, or will it shift from left to right, in other words, from reactants to form more products? We'll do this by calculating what's called the reaction quotient, which is symbolized with a capital letter Q. The reaction quotient is determined by substituting the concentration or pressure values at a specific point in a reaction into the equilibrium constant expression. Once we've done this, the reaction quotient can be compared to the equilibrium constant to determine which direction the reaction will proceed to reach equilibrium. When we make this comparison, we should use the equilibrium constant on the left and the reaction quotient on the right. This is actually alphabetical as well. If the equilibrium constant has the same value as the reaction quotient, that's an indication that the reaction is currently at equilibrium. However, if the equilibrium constant is less than the value of the reaction quotient, that indicates that there are currently too many products and not enough reactants. Because of this, the system will shift to the left to use up some of the products and to form more reactants. On the other hand, if the equilibrium constant is greater than the value of the reaction quotient, this indicates that there are too many reactants and not enough products. In this situation, the system will shift to the right to form more products and to use up some of the reactants in order to reach equilibrium. Let's look at an example comparing the equilibrium constant and the reaction quotient. In this system, we have two moles of SO3 gas in equilibrium with two moles of SO2 gas and one mole of O2 gas. If the current pressures of each of the species are 0.16 atmospheres of SO3, 0.41 atmospheres of SO2, and 2.5 atmospheres of O2, which direction will the system have to go in order to reach equilibrium? In order to answer this question, we need to use the current pressures that are given, calculate the reaction quotient Q, and then compare K and Q. In this problem, since we're giving the pressures of each of these gases, we'll use the equilibrium constant with pressure units instead of concentrations. To find the equilibrium constant expression, we would take the pressures of the product gases divided by the pressure of the reactant gas. So we would end up with the pressure of SO2 squared multiplied by the pressure of O2, and all that divided by the pressure of SO3 squared. We can plug in the values of the current pressures for each of those gases, 0.41 for the pressure of SO2, 2.5 for the pressure of O2, and 0.16 for the pressure of SO3. And when we do this on our calculators, we get a reaction quotient of 16. When we compare K and Q, we see that K is less than the value of Q. This means that the reaction moves to the left. In other words, it moves to form more of the reactant, SO3. By now, you should be able to describe the differences between an equilibrium constant and a reaction quotient, specifically in terms of what kinds of concentrations or pressures are used to determine either one of them. You should also be able to use the reaction quotient to determine which direction a system will shift to reach equilibrium. Finally, you should be able to describe a system with a reaction quotient either greater than or less than the equilibrium constant in terms of the relative amounts of the reactants and products compared to the equilibrium amounts.